And we're back with a quick tutorial on centralized storage. Centralized storage is just a way of dumping all of the debris all around the map into one location. This is very useful. Uh, firstly, it speeds up game performance. Currently, say all these pieces of debris out here for, say, this one right here. The game has to calculate the temperature of this debris, how much temperature it's transferring to the surrounding atmosphere, how much temperature it's transferring to the tile beneath it, and it has to do that for every piece of debris spread out all across the map. Now, originally we used to just get a bunch of uh, storage bins and dump all the materials of one type into one storage bin. When you have 20 tons of, say, aluminum ore in one storage bin, the aluminum ore would all become the same temperature because when you combine elements, they, they all even out their temperature. Now, though, we do have these automatic dispensers, and automatic dispensers allow you to dump everything you own into one single spot. This saves you an awful lot of hassle. Firstly, though, you want to make sure that the drop-off, I make it three tiles deep. The reason being, there's going to be a decor negative coming off this stuff, and it gets worse and worse the more you put in there. We'll cover more on that later. So having a three tiles deep means your duplicates can stand up here and pick up resources from down here and take them to where you want to go. Uh, firstly, you will want to get four automatic dispensers, at least. Then you're going to set them to sweep only, and you're going to set them to sweep pretty much everything. There will be a few things you're probably not going to want to sweep, like bleachstone, an oxalite, anything that off-gasses, effectively. Uh, for example, in the organics, I don't sweep, sweep slime. Oh, rot pile and polluted dirt should not be in there either. Those should those have a different location they need to be going to. Uh, everything else, though, pretty... Oh, and no seeds. I usually have a separate seed storage as well. Now, we're just going to copy those settings there. So then, usually at a later point in the game, not early on, because early on it's not really worth it. Later on, though, when it becomes a performance issue, you're going to want to start a massive, and I mean massive, sweep campaign. So, in the background, I queued up a lot of sweep commands. All the sweep commands to clean up everything, all at about level 3. Now, a few things to note. This is on sweep only, just remember that. It has to be on sweep only. If you don't have it on sweep only, your duplicates will keep picking up uh, resources from in here and dumping them right back into the automatic dispensers. You're going to end up in a loop, basically. So set them to sweep only. This is a sweep only stockpile. Now, the reason there's four of them is duplicates have a... Well, there's a limit to how much the duplicates can drop off at these. And because of that limit, if you have only one of these, they'll end up finding something else to drop off the resources into, which is why I have these sample storage bins right here. These storage bins are set to level 3. These uh, automatic dispensers are set to level 6. What should happen is, if you have enough automatic dispensers, your duplicates should only drop off resources at the dispensers. However, if you have so many duplicates picking up resources and there's not enough available resource space, I suppose, here, they'll end up dumping them into these side storage bins. Now, as you can see, my dupes are having a merry old time just dumping resources right into that centralized pit, and there's plenty of space for them to do it, and they're not getting, uh, they're not dumping any into these little side projects here or these little side storage bins. However, if I was to, say, delete a couple of these, let's just deconstruct two of these here, what should happen is some of the uh, swept resources should start ending up in the storage bins as well. And there we go. We've ended up with a little bit of sand ending up in there because... There just was no space at these automatic dispensers. Duplicants had already decided that they were going to be dropping off their resources, so other duplicants couldn't drop their resources off until... And they laid claim to it, basically, so there was no chance for the other duplicants to drop it off. So try and keep at least four. Six may be necessary if you have an awful lot of duplicants that are doing an enormous sweep job, but four I usually find is sufficient. Now, in this instance, I have a, another bunch of these set up over here, but this is just a, to do with a map-specific issue. Uh, you may end up in a, a situation where you end up with volcanoes on your map. Uh, where are we? Yeah, there's some volcanic uh, places, like there's one over here, one down here, uh, another one. Oh, there's another section of them over here, and you'll end up with some extremely hot rocks. For example, we have 1300C obsidian right here and 1300C uh, igneous rock. So for sweeping purposes, I do not sweep those into a centralized area. Also, I don't sweep regolith in here. Regolith should never be swept into a centralized area. So currently, all the igneous rock and the uh, the obsidian is being dumped into a steam room where it can be turned into power, or, well, cooled down. Those rocks should end up cold, and they won't cause me any issues. The reason being, you're dumping algae in here, and algae, if you heat it up above a certain point, uh, where's the melting point, 125, it will turn into dirt. So what can happen is, if you end up dumping a bunch of hot material in here, it will cook the algae, and the algae will turn into dirt, or you can cook slime, and it will turn into dirt, though I wouldn't recommend putting slime in here either. And when dirt forms, it actually forms a tile that will encase all your material. And you'll wonder why you suddenly have no resources until you look at this and go, oh, I should probably dig that out. 
this is a really good idea to set one of these up just to centralize everything. It helps not just with performance due to calculations uh, on temperature transfer, but also duplicants when they go to get given a chore to build something or do something that requires resources. If those resources are spread out all across the map, the game has to calculate what's the most cost efficient way pathwise to get those resources to where they're need needed for building. If all your resources are in exactly one spot, that really cuts down on the amount of options the duplicants have and therefore it cuts down on pathing. First time I had ga major game slowdown, I installed one of these systems, cut down an awful lot of, well, it didn't make my game perfect, but it definitely increased the uh, frame rate I was getting. Here we have an example of um, a later game storage array. Exact same as before, only this time it's in a vacuum. Seal them up with a couple of liquid locks and suck out all the gas pressure. The reason for that is it stops any trans temperature transfer of the materials. Is it necessary? No, but it should help performance theoretically slightly. At the same time, uh, I replaced the bottom of this with an insulated tile made of insulation to stop any temperature transfer at all. Before I would normally stick in something like a, a sensor usually a weight plate, so that weight plate would give me an idea of how much resources there was on the plate. It's not necessary. I put in the weight plate just as a more of a curiosity than anything else. Now, when you're installing one of these, you can install one of these quite early, but I wouldn't advise you to do a massive sweep. For example, this map here is quite late game, so it's had plenty of time to sweep up all the resources all across the map. Early game, there's no need to sweep up all the resources. If you start to experience performance problems, then is usually about the time you should get into that. Maybe a little bit before. Uh, preferably, I wait until I have a perfectly sustainable base. Once the base is sustainable, then, then, and only then will I, in, will I install one of these and do a massive sweep. Because once it's sustainable, I'll queue up a massive sweep, and then I can go away and come back several hours later, and everything will be finished. Anyway, hope this helps you out. And just to, oh, just to go over this one last time, or just the settings on this one last time, set them to sweep only. Only take the things you want. Make sure you don't put in a whole bunch of hot items here. You, there's other nasty things that can happen if you put in hot items, like you can melt phosphorite and make phosphorus, which can flood the whole area, and that will increase temperature transfer even more, and then you'll end up with phosphorus gas. So don't dump regolith in here. Don't dump in any hot materials. Nothing above about 120, 100 degrees or so should be put in here. Just as a, a safe uh, idea. Everything that's going to cause problems or that's going to be hot, dump it somewhere else. Anyway, hope this was at least uh, mildly informative for you, and uh, good luck.